with any project that we undertake, at some point, we don't have something to complete the project. Sometimes it's running out of materials, although with this project, that's not the case because if you remember I showed you, I mapped out all the pieces on paper so we would have enough material. What we're missing now are some tools. So, you guessed it. We are arriving at Lowe's. Take you in. You can come shopping with us. These orange ones are the kind that that guy that we watch on YouTube has. They were the kind he used. Okay, yeah, it's cheaper than another one. That's thirty-four dollars. Well, now how long do we need it really to expand? Well, because I guess if you're going to invest, you need to. I figured uh, this is twenty-four inch, and I figure that's what we need to invest in. We need four. I know some cabinets are that deep, and I'm sure this is not our finished project. Okay, well, what's this one that's a little cheaper? It's the same the thing, except it's yeah, but it's might be fourteen like, versus yeah, it might be lighter duty. Eighteen. So we don't need nothing that heavy duty. We're just holding the trim. Now this doesn't have a stop on the end, but I don't guess that matters. Yeah, it does. See it being oh. Yeah. I agree. Clamps. We don't need nothing that's going to hold up a car engine. Well, we had several days of rain and our old scrap barn wood material was pretty wet so first thing we did was lay that out so it would start to dry. Now normally you would build the frames and attach them to the carcasses before you paint but Randy felt it was just going to be easier for him to use the sprayer uh, to put some primer on these bookshelves and the centerpiece prior to attaching the frames and that we would do that after painting. So that's what we're doing here. We were just setting up to uh, spray outside and then we'll bring them back on the porch for the finished coat of paint. We are using a water-based primer, just kills, um, but the final paint is an oil paint. The rule is you can't put water on top of oil, but you can put oil on top of water. And a water-based primer is much easier to clean up. For the face frames, we decided to just go with pine, solid pine. We're using one by fours here for the styles and all of the rails except for the top and then we're using a 1x6 there which you'll eventually understand why. So the first step is to measure for the styles. Those are the vertical long pieces and he's cutting the 1x4 to the correct length. After that, we will take it over to the table saw and rip it in half, and our two styles for the bookcase will be the exact same measurements. And here, we're using our handy dandy new tools, our clamps on all four corners of the bookcase doing this so that we can get perfect measurements for the rails which are your horizontal pieces. So you do your long verticals first 
and then you're going to do your ends to make your the basic frame before we come in and do these. Now we're brushing on the outer edges, all the outer edges, but it's hanging over a little bit so that we can, uh, when we putty it and let that dry and we sand it, we can sand it back so it's totally flush. Cut all these pieces. You want them tight, not too tight where it bulges out the wood, and certainly not too loose where you've got a gap. So you, there's a sweet spot there when you're cutting verticals to go in between the two pieces of wood. We will attach the rails to the styles using our pocket hole jig again getting a nice tight fit and then we will attach the entire frame to the bookcase with uh, Randy's 18 gauge brad nailer and always applying glue now for the frame we used a different glue um, it it's still the tight bond but it's the quick and thick so it didn't run to fill the nail holes we use this dap plastic wood use the alcohol based formula because it dries really quick and super hard to fill the seams where the frame met the base unit we use this OD fix it stick which is a two-part bonding putty uh, it has the putty and then the hardener and you tear a piece off Mix it in your hands like you're mixing play-doh and then smear it into the seam It dries also very quickly and extremely hard and then you're able to sand down the edge Smoothly, but you'll see here in a little bit. We had to do a little more And here's a close-up of him sanding down that OD putty. When you mix it, it was gray. Lots of sanding in projects like this. And he, uh, you might see in places where he looks like he's burning through the MDF a little bit. And he is, but that's okay because it's all going to be painted. Well, remember when I said that OD two-part putty business that we put on the edge and you saw Randy sand that we were going to have to do something else? Well, here is the something else. Randy wasn't happy after painting it that you could still see the seam between the frame and the carcass of the, of the bookcase. You could still see it. And so, this is what he's doing. I love to watch Randy using his drywall knife. He is so smooth. But of course, he's been doing it all his life, so. But he certainly can use that knife. So, the product he is using is Durabond. Don't mix up too much at one time because it does get hard really fast. But that's 20 minutes. It's 20 minutes. They make a five, which you have really, really, really got to go. And they make a 90. And a 90, yes. And a 45. But this stuff is so good. I knew a guy once that used this for Bondo on his truck. <laughs> he put this 
filled it in like Bondo, grind it, it stayed there for 10 years. Oh my. So, point being, when something's not working, you... Improvise. Yeah, using what you know. And drywall is something Randy knows. Well, you do own a drywall company. Will it be one coat or two? Uh, I should just be able to do one. Do some really good sanding. And you're kind of floating it out, right? Yeah. We previously used that up. Other stuff, I can't remember. Yeah, I, I showed and talked about it earlier, but um, it didn't really. We built it up when I sanded it there and you can still see where it's put together. Yeah. So apparently there's a trick with that using that stuff I have my son. Well, it wasn't the Mohawk brand that was recommended because I, I would have had to have ordered that and I did get the Souther at Lowe's, but uh, maybe that was the difference. I don't know, but. Either way, this is the fix. And here's a glimpse of the beginning of the install. Stay tuned. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep looking up and have a good one.